Of course. So my name is Diana Castro. I'm a pediatric neurologist and a pediatric neuromuscular, neuromuscular physician. I have been practicing and treating patients with SMA for 11 years, um, being part of all the research protocols. So I was at the time where we did not have treatment, then through all the time where we had all the research done, and now by this time that we have options for treatment. I was in academia until this year. I was in academia for 14 years total. And uh, I left to open a nonprofit private practice for neuromuscular patients. So I'll be seeing adult and pediatric patients. And also I have a research uh, center in the same, say the same office to try to bring options for patients for uh, research in a little bit of more, you know, faster way, let's say. So spinal muscular atrophy or SMA, it is neurodegenerative. And that's what I always say is the first thing you have to understand that it's a progressive disease, that without treatment, the patient will develop certain signs and symptoms that will end up finally causing a lot of weakness, muscle atrophy, and so on. The biggest problem with spinal muscular atrophy is that the patient is missing a specific gene called SMN1 or survival motor neuron gene 1. And that gene, it's extremely important because it produces a protein called SMN protein that helps the cells in the spinal cord to develop and to stay alive. If those cells don't stay alive, if those cells actually die early, as it happens in patients with SMA, the patient will progressively, like I say, develop muscle weakness and develop muscle atrophy. And not only that, but it will also affect the ability to eat and the ability to breathe. There are different types of spinal muscular atrophy that we have called over the years, but now we're actually having to start thinking about how are we gonna call these different because now we have treatments, treatments that have changed completely the outcome of these conditions. But in the past, the way we classify the condition was according to when did the patient start having symptoms and also with pretty good correlation, how many copies of the backup gene the patient had. Because we, they, we do actually, all humans, we have the SMN1 and we have a backup copy that is called SMN2. So patients with a spinal muscular atrophy only have the SMN2. So depending on those copies, the patient could be extremely weak, like a, like a patient with a spinal muscular atrophy type 1, who usually would only have two backup copies who will not be able to seat, hold their head, stand up or do nothing. And then you will have the stronger side of that that will be a patient with a spinal muscular atrophy type three, that will be the one who will be able to walk. But again, always remembering that that ability will be lost over time. So now, we, like I said, now we have kids that were born as a type one because they had two copies with SMA, of SMN2 but then with treatment, now they are acting like a type two or like a type three. So that's why we're working on changing those names.